he recognized the works of the fathers. And what was that? Circumcision and tithes and offerings. So what he did was that he continued and systematized circumcision. Not because it started with him, but because it was of who? The fathers. Moses systematized paying tithes. Not because it started with him or under the law, but because it was of who? The fathers. Can we say amen? You know, so uh, Moses gave the system and systematized that which existed Abraham. All right? So let's go to Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 19. Back to chapter 3 and verse 19. Galatians 3 and 19. All right. And let us pick it up there, verse 19. All right. Wherefore then serveth the law? What was the purpose of the law? Why did God give the law to Moses, to the children of Israel? Let's read. It was added because of transgressions, because of sins. All right, that's why it was added. Let's read. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. That seed is Jesus. The law was to continue until Jesus. It was added because of transgressions, because of sins. And it was to continue until the promised seed would come. Remember in the Garden of Eden, the seed of the woman shall bruise what? The serpent's head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Uh, my son showed me this preacher online that was talking, trying to make the argument, trying to prove uh, to no avail that Adam and Eve believed that Cain was to be the Messiah. And so they started grooming him to be the Messiah, to save the world. And of course, it was very comical uh, how him and my son interchanged back and forth. Uh, and uh, because Cain names means... Uh, a certain thing and that Abel's name means a certain thing and he tried to hook those things up to try to fit his false doctrine well what the so-called preacher didn't realize is simply that the Messiah was not to be groomed how are you gonna groom God who say amen the Messiah was supposed to be God Adam had a hard time living right himself how he gonna groom the Messiah so it's just a bunch of foolishness but when you read see these so-called preachers online that claim to have some sort of monopoly and a, an authority over the scriptures, you're liable to hear any and all kinds of wild things on there. That Cain was groomed to be the Messiah by Adam and Eve. The Messiah was not even come from, uh, to, be, to be born uh, without the aid of a man. You know, so, but be that as it may, um, the law was added because of transgressions. The law of God. Ten Commandments and those ordinances that were added on, the law showed what was holy and what was righteous. The law showed the holiness of God. It showed the righteousness of God. And so when they would see the law, they would see what God expected out of them and they were required to live up to it. Ten Commandments and the 613 ordinances of divine worship that they were supposed to observe. It showed what God required. It showed what was holy. But they did not have the power to keep it because they did not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So God expected them to keep the law, but they did not have the power to keep it. All right? So, why was it added? Because of transgressions. And it was to exist till the seed should come, that's Jesus, to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a what? Mediator. The law was added to the covenant. It didn't do away with it. The law was to end when Jesus would come. All right, now, let's go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 3 through 4. The law showed them what was right. Romans chapter 8. And 
and verse 3 through 4. All right, the law show the righteousness of God. It showed the people what God wanted. But they couldn't keep it. They couldn't give God what he wanted because they didn't have the Holy Ghost. All right, let's look at it. Romans 8, verse 3 through 4. Let's read. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, that is looking like us, sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Why did he do that? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh. We are saved to fulfill the righteousness of the law. They couldn't do it. So God saved us, gave us the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and now God is getting what he wanted all along. Holiness, righteousness. Not our righteousness, but his right. Because our righteousness is nothing but what? Filthy rags. So he saved us, made us children of Abraham, and we are fulfilling the righteousness of the law of God. We are measuring up to the laws and standards of God as we live holy. And I don't understand it that people are just deceived by the devil to think that they can be saved and not live holy and still be acceptable to God. God already been through those type of things. Now he is getting what he wanted since the Garden of Eden. A people that will be holy, that will serve him because they love him. Can we say amen? So, let's make this point. So we are saved to fulfill the righteousness of what? The law. What the law stood for and said how the people were to live before God. These laws, observe these laws, live before God. That's what the law showed. It showed God's righteousness. So, let's say tithes is under the law. Let's say tithes started under the law. We still have to pay tithes because we are saved to fulfill the righteousness of what? The law, what the law required. So even if the tithes started under the law, us being saved, we are responsible. God expects us to uphold the righteousness of the law. He expects us to observe the law. He expects us through our character and through our behavior, through our lives, to reflect the righteousness that the law demonstrated. So we still would have to pay tithes even if it was under the law. You see it? Because we are supposed to fulfill uh, the righteousness of the law through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's how it's done. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 7. We're going to try to move along quickly tonight because we're kind of behind um, in this lesson. Hebrews chapter 7. All right. Hebrews chapter 7, verse number 19. And then we're going to get into the purpose of tithing. And um, hopefully we will be able to cover the use of tithes. And we'll be moving right along. Hebrews chapter number 7, verse number 19. All right, let's read. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. Now, all the law did, it didn't give them power to keep it. It did not make them perfect, because it did not give them the power to observe it. But it showed what was perfect. You follow? It showed what God wanted. When it said, thou shalt not kill, the law showed them. By standing firm and tall with the statement, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness, so on and so forth. It didn't make them perfect, it just showed them what perfection was. Now that we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we can fulfill that and we can show forth 
the righteousness of God to the world. Because the world will never know what righteousness is unless they see it through us that are saved. That's why holiness is important. That's why living right is so important. That's why the devil has deceived so many people because he doesn't, he doesn't want the world to see Jesus. So if he can get as many people to sin, 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 even though that they're saved, to constantly break the law of God, even though that they save, he understands that the world will never be able to see the righteousness of God through his people because he would deceive his people and get them so caught up, deceive God's people, and get them so caught up in themselves that they would pursue pleasing themselves rather than pleasing God. There's an attack on holiness. There's an attack on righteousness. There's an attack on living saved. You know, now on my job, they um, were talking about preachers on the job. So we have a lot of preachers on our job. And some of the preachers on our job uh, have not uh, lived above reproach. And so they constantly make a lot of jokes about, um, about preachers and, and collecting offerings and those kinds of things. And some of them even make jokes about me. And one of the officers said, how do you feel about that? And I said, well, uh, I have a sense of humor. I said, as long as they understand that none of the stuff they're saying is true, then there ain't no problem. I'll laugh with them. But as soon as they start saying things and they really believe them, that's when we have a problem. Because they all know on my job that I'm serious, that we're not playing games. Some of them even watch us online. Some of them might even be watching us tonight or may watch us later on tonight. I can tell you how many times we sat on the job and put on the Bible class and officers and supervisors sat around there watching it with me. You know, it was kind of embarrassing, embarrassing about it because I'm sitting right there and they're look, looking right at me. So I got to be careful what I say, right? I'm going to say what I need to say. Can we say amen? I don't care who looking. They might be watching that. They know me. They know, they know better than that. But we have some on the job who's have not lived above the level of reproach. And so sometimes they make jokes about them, and sometimes they may make a joke about me, whatever. I said, but as long as they know. And I told them that, and they said, we know. RJ, we know. You're nothing like, then everything is fine. You know. But the devil is trying to get as many of God's people, many people that say that they're saved, well, I'll dignify it. Many of them that say that they embrace the Christian culture. Like that, that's a good term, isn't it? The Christian culture and still do their dirt on the side. Still out there drinking, still out there committing all of the things that they did before they acknowledge, quote unquote, they're saved. Because the devil knows main way or the only way to shut out Jesus from the world is to promote those that claim to be of Jesus that live worse lives in the